Hey guys, it's Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop and co-host of the future home diagnosis television show, which is a snowball that's quickly picking up speed. Uh, you, as you know, we shot the six episodes on the Proof is Possible tour, and then uh, we are in post-production right now. We've got 11 sponsors on board, and it's growing. Now, you will see in this video, which is about how I explain home performance concepts and tools to civilians, uh, you will see RetroTech tools, FLIR tools, and CPS products tools, all of which are heroes of the story as far as I'm concerned. Those are all companies that are engaged in sponsoring home diagnosis, so I hope that you stay tuned for that when it comes out in PBS uh, very soon. Now, I gave this talk 214 times on the Proof is Possible tour. If you really want to get your story down pat, come be a part of my mastermind. That mastermind starts every fall. It's uh, Labor Day weekend is when it starts. So go ahead and pre-register for that. Go to homeperformance.training and you can check out all of the, uh, the pre-course materials for that. But enrollment opens on uh, August 1st, I believe. So you should come check that out if you really want to get this down pat. But in the meantime, this video will serve. You need to know your story. And the story of home performance, the way I tell it, always starts with the 4321 breakdown of home performance thinking. So that's how I always start out. I'm gonna skip into the middle so you don't have to see all that. If you wanna see that video, uh, I, I'm putting a link on the screen right now to that. So please click on that if you don't know the 4321. Otherwise, just go ahead and zoom right in here. Now, the one goal of doing all this where you analyze a home based on the four elements of heat flow, airflow and pressure, moisture and air quality, you make the three recommendations, air seal, insulation, HVAC upgrades on our two systems, which are the skin and the circulatory system, the enclosure and the engines, is not energy efficiency. We already covered that, right? You get that as a byproduct. That's nice. It's also not sustainability or grain. And it's not even comfort. Because if I sat down with a husband and wife and I said, I'm going to make you both more comfortable. Do you both think the same temperature is ideal? No, absolutely. <laughs> Every married couple in the world is going to tell you two different temperatures. So you are not going to make both of them more comfortable. You're going to make her more comfortable because she's more important. And then when she leaves town for the weekend, you can set the thermostat wherever you want, right? What we are giving you is control. This is what you are asking for from your contractors from now on. This is what the renovators in the room are delivering to their clients, guaranteed control. This is what the real estate agents are helping their clients to understand they can have. Because most people think houses are just screwed up. All houses have problems. Not true. This stuff is how you demonstrate control. If you do not have test data, you do not know for a fact you have control. Now, in an ideal audience, you want both homeowners and building professionals. And what I do with this is my job is always half cheerleader and half intimidator. With both groups, this message really resonates. And you want them there together so that the pros can see the homeowners reacting to this and say, whoa, I want to be able to influence people that way. And you can see homeowners saying, well, I want to hire somebody who can do this work for me, which I'm not one of, I'm just a consultant. And you can refer work that way. And by the way, if you're an HVAC guy and there are other HVAC guys in the room with you, that's okay. There's more than enough work for all of us if we all get people into thinking about housing as sports. That's what we want, is for people to just ask for proof all the time. Now, the scary and sexy part of the story for both of these people is for homeowners. Scary, wait, you're saying if I don't get proof that I got what I paid for, I'm, I might be getting screwed or I might be creating side effects that are gonna hurt my family? And the sexy is, wait, I can prove that I'm getting what I'm paying for? This is the two sides of this coin. And for the pros, it's, wait a minute, you're telling me that I can prove that I'm scientifically superior to my competition? And also, wait a minute, my competition is trying to prove that I'm scientifically inferior to them? So telling this story with the heroes of the story, which are the tools, is the whole thing. Now we get everybody up and we get them touching the tools. Everybody get up. Let's come over here and see some test equipment. This is where the magic is. Now I'm going to start with the um, more important system. The two systems again are enclosure and engines. The enclosure will always win any battle between the two systems. Enclosure wins. So air seal and insulation is screwed up. It doesn't matter how good the HVAC is, period. It's always going to be uh, losing the battle. So here, blower door. Everybody say blower door. Blower, blower door. door. Good. This is the most important tool in all of home performance. This is how you test air uh, leakage. And this is going to help you to localize air leakage. It's going to help you to find out how much big broad number that we put on the electric panel of new houses and you know if comply with code, etc. The way that this works is we have a manometer. Everybody say manometer. Manometer. Yeah. Good. This is a pressure gauge. Uh, so, the way that this works is we have this installed on the front door of the house. Normally, I'd like to have this set up for you guys so you can actually see it, but you can see it in the videos on my YouTube channel um, very easily. The manometer is set up and plugged into this, and this is reading the pressure inside the house with reference to outside, so the difference between inside and outside pressures. 
and I'm going to use this fan, which is installed in the front door of the house with a big nylon airtight shroud, to depressurize the house. I'm going to build up a pressure difference. So I'm going to make your house the most depressurized place in the entire neighborhood. At that point, because this is a calibrated opening, I know exactly how big this is. The fan can tell my manometer how many CFM, cubic feet per minute, of airflow is going through this fan. And since you can't create a vacuum in the universe, you have to, for every CFM that goes out through this fan, another CFM is coming in somewhere through the house. I can now measure how many leaks there are in the house, what the size of total leakage is, right? So that's what this does. It's again called blower door, super, super important. If you're gonna start with just one test on your house, whether it's a new house or an existing house, start with the blower door test. And you can do so much within this. So uh, outside of just the blower door test by itself, you can do what are called nested tests. This is an infrared camera. You're reading radiant heat radiation that's coming from surfaces. It's not an x-ray, you can't see inside of things technically, but you can kind of, if you know enough about this tool, you can see some really cool stuff. Essentially, there is no way to hide anything in construction anymore, period. Mm -hmm. I could find out anything about how a house is built if I use the right testing uh, techniques, tools, and I spend enough time at a person's house. All the HVAC guys are trying to pay attention to this, because number one, if the enclosure doesn't work, their work doesn't matter. It's gonna not work, period. Their house is gonna be smelly or moldy or whatever it is because of this stuff, enclosure stuff. Also, you can prove now that HVAC guys either did a good job or did not do a good job. It's pretty black and white because the stuff is printed on the sticker inside of the equipment. It says it's a two-ton air conditioner, should be moving two tons of heat. Somebody like me who used to play piano for ballerinas can come in and test with a $400 piece of equipment. And by the way, this is kind of cool. All the new equipment works with cell phones generally. So this is like Bluetooth stuff and yeah. And by the way, I always carry around an infrared camera on my phone. You can get an infrared camera like this. This is a $25,000 piece of equipment. This costs $200, especially for the renovators and the uh, realtors in the room. Someone is going to come into your open house with one of these. Yeah. Guess how many people follow this person around when they're like walking through the open house? <laughs> Everyone. This right here is one of my favorites. It's called Pedo Tube. For anybody who knows anything about planes, they use them on airplanes too. This is the gold standard for measuring airflow. I am, have been known to stand up in front of a room full of HVAC technicians and say, does anybody know what this is? Because if you don't, there are people like me who have been out there just for a few years and they're showing your clients things that you don't want them to know, trust them. So like in my dream world, all contractors test something about what they do and it's a happy place. It's not a place where there's like people going around saying, oh, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. That's not what I like my job to be generally. We have here, Combustion testing equipment. So I can take a reading of like a furnace or a water heater and see what the, the combustion efficiency, the temperature, how much carbon monoxide is being created by things. Does everybody know about carbon monoxide? Mm -hmm. Super dangerous, can you smell it? Mm -hmm. No, you can't tell. Uh, what is going to save you from carbon monoxide in your house? <laughs> the detector, no. Cut, so that you don't have to sit through all two hours of my talk. And by the way, I talk at this speed pretty much solid for two hours and people are snacking and drinking and things like that while it's happening. I'm not gonna make you listen to my carbon monoxide thing. You might have heard this if you watch my other videos or listen to the Building Forms podcast. Uh, but in any case, carbon monoxide is scary. Now you wanna talk about all the things that are scary, that are parts of the story, that are the characters of the story that people already understand. And you might even get into something that's as off the beaten path as electromagnetic field testing. We have something as esoteric as an EMF tester. I like to take this into architects' offices. And for example, here, we have an EMF reading of almost six, uh, and that's milligauss. Does anybody know anything about EMF? Electromagnetic field. Uh, so it's testing electrical uh, invisible stuff, magnetic invisible stuff, and even radio frequency invisible stuff. This is all super cool. There is no research about this that anyone will accept as actual scientific. If you go on the internet and you type in EMF dangerous, you will get people who are saying this is the most dangerous thing in the world, like nuclear bombs are not as scary as this stuff. I was gonna buy a piece of property that had high voltage lines running behind it, and I was like, well, I wanna know about this, so I went online and I realized like, okay, well, everybody's totally insane about this, like we don't have actual data. So I bought one of these, and I started just going around testing things. Six is about twice the recommended level by the people who made a recommended level that just they made up, basically. Um, you will find that sitting on an airplane on the tarmac is super high. Like in front of a soda machine at a restaurant, super high. A lot of places that you would think like, oh no, sitting in front of the television, hardly anything at all. How about so, your cell phone? 
Well, the cell phone doesn't create a lot of magnetic energy. The magnetic okay. is what I think people are really worried about because it's mm -hmm. you don't know what it does literally to your body. There's an iron in your blood, and we're not sure. Like, if you lay in a magnetic field for eight hours straight in the same position, is that messing with your system somehow? And the idea is what you said earlier, sensitized. Mm -hmm. Uh, when somebody has an environmental sensitivity, what will happen is you have an event that is the sensitization, basically. So your body basically gets an allergic reaction to something in the environment that is invisible to most of the people. At that point, like with mold, a lot of people will have this reaction with mold, black mold. No one else in the room will be affected by this mold strain. But that person, as soon as their body gets even a hint of it, mm -hmm. will totally, their body will go freak out. Um, the idea is that people who have been sensitized to anything invisible, are then much more likely to have their body react crazy to anything else right. invisible. So EMF is important for things where you are already sensitized and you have like an, a you know a reaction to something invisible. This can make a difference. So I do some inspections with this, but this is mostly a uh, party trick. Corbett, please uh, finish the story. So you took it. There were high tension lines. You bought oh, that yes, on purpose. Okay. The six so now. Okay. What was it? So I have a daughter lines? who's two years old. We have another baby coming, and I was like, <laughs> okay, well, if I'm gonna buy this place, I want to lick her until they're done with college, potentially. Um, what you know what's gonna happen and so we started testing and I was looking around at trees and I realized that trees will grow right next to the high voltage power lines and they're not all cancerous and stunted right. and dead mm -hmm. so I thought well okay they're alive I'm alive they should be affecting both of us the same way and I tested all over the place and I realized like we're just exposed to this everywhere I also tested in my house <laughs> in the tiny lab and the two <laughs> places where it spikes are in my daughter's bed, the co-sleeper next to our mattress, where her head is. Whoa. That's where the heat pump is right outside. I didn't think about that. And then also when you're sitting on the toilet where your head is, is right next to the solar system. And we had lived in the house for a year at that point, and none of us had any, like my daughter's been to the doctor one time for a diaper rash. So yes. I was like, okay, it doesn't matter. Not for around me. the microwave or anything like that? Nope, no, we don't have a microwave. Okay. Yeah. So I hope the way that I explain this topic to civilians has helped you, please feel free to steal anything that I said. It's all yours for the taking. Repeat away and you don't have to give me credit. We just need to get this story out into the public. Stay tuned for Home Diagnosis, which is going to hope to do that through the medium of television very soon.